Welcome to Sockhouse. We like it, the man I said, and today we have two lovely ladies representing the fans. One from East Coast, with Lady K in the house, and from the South, we have Houston Red Army, Mandy representing. Today, we're going to talk about the United. Has the season been successful? Can it get better? Is Ole still the right man? I'm going to start with Lady K since she's our guest today. So, Lady K, United came second, came second in the Europa League final. Is Ole still the right man to lead United forward? Yes, yes. I think we should give him a chance. I do. I do. I believe in him. I think we should definitely give him a chance. Yes, we need trophies. I totally agree. Um, but I think uh, the last game that we played, the finals, yeah, I was a little disappointed with the um, the changes in the end, like, you know, no changes for 90 minutes. Uh, that was hard. That was a hard pill to swallow. It was very painful to watch that game in the end. And it was just total disappointment. But I still don't believe that we should get actually get rid of him um, on that basis. I think the team has come a long way. I think he has um, helped a lot of the um, players, including Shaw, because we have seen a huge development in, in Luke Shaw. And that was never there. That was definitely never, never there. And um, even McTonomy, McTonomy did very well um, in the season as well. So I think he's pretty good. Pogba wasn't as crazy under under all this season. So I think we should give him a chance. I just think that we need more players. Right, more players. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mandy, Ole still the right guy. See you laughing and smiling. Is Ole still the right guy despite, you know, no trophies? Jose Marino won trophies, but he still got fired. What's your take? I'm going to sound like such a copycat for Kay here. Um, I agree totally. Um, I still think Ole is the right guy. I mean, where have we've progressed every season under Ole. So we were started out with six or seven in the league. Now we're in finals of the, um, the, I was about to say champions league, the <laughs> uh, Europa <laughs> league. Um, we're almost there. <laughs> I think that we're going to show up next year in the Champions League. That is my true um, belief right now. I guess that's what's going to get me through the summer, but I agree. He's the right man for the job. I, uh, again, I'll echo the sentiment, Luke Shaw. I mean, hello, he's now yes. starting. He's now in the lineup for England in the Euro. So it's amazing. Um, I have had, he's always a player that I've looked at and thought, Yes, he has the potential, and um, apart from being made of glass and being broken for so many seasons, right. um, to see what he's become this last season has been great. Right. Um, I think that he has a kind of a quiet leadership versus Jose. I like his style more. Um, you know, in some of the post um, game interviews, I've always said I've been annoyed by us not making changes sooner. Yeah, um, maybe eventually that will change, but I think watching um, Marcus Rashford's interviews after the game and seeing how him and it sounds like the rest of the team are behind the manager, they're behind his plan and they have bought in. I think that is super important for the future success of our, of our team. So right. Ole all the way. Okay. So both of you are still Ole in, which is great. The reason I, I wanted to get your views, a lot of people are Ole out due to the fact that, like, okay, tactically they feel he is taking United to the highest level we can get to, whereby he's not able to change a game tactically when a, a new plan is need to be incorporated into the game. Like you saw the final, he used the same guys hoping for some magic, individual magic, whereby we could see Rashford was struggling badly, but not till extra time, then he played into penalties. So that is why people are saying like, Tactically, yes, he's a great guy. He's changed the culture completely. But that Mr. Nice guy, the coaching staff behind him, are they experienced enough to take United to the champions? You, you saw we got knocked out in the group stage when we needed one point and we lost to both games. So those are where people, fans are like, this guy is like, mm, he's a nice guy, but kind of not tactically advanced. You saw the Chelsea manager. Six months, Champions League final, win the trophy. That is where people are a bit concerned. Like, mm. okay, you mentioned players. Do you think giving him more players in the right positions will make a difference next season? 
Yes, I do think so. And um, to piggyback on what you just said earlier about uh, Marcus Rashford uh, in the 90 minutes and he was struggling, that is to tell you that he actually believes in his players. He has such confidence in his players. And I think that's one of the reasons why these players um, did what they did this season, how they have improved. And let's not forget that they had a good record away as well. Oh, so yeah. we have oh, to big. give credit to, you know, that hasn't been done in a very long time. No. So we have to give credit for that too. But I still believe that he definitely needs a few more players. I think, um, I, I, I honestly, I mean, Rashford is my favorite. I don't I know what see. happened. <laughs> yes, he is. I am 100% Rashi. I don't know what happened, you know, in the end, because he was doing very well. I don't know what happened. You know, I, I, I don't know. However, this is how a coach comes into play. He still has this confidence in him. And I don't think he's that this softy person that everybody thinks he is. He's not that softy. He just knows how to present himself to the press. Behind closed door, no, I don't think he's a softy. I really don't think so. Because I was reading an article about um, Lukaku talking about um, how he felt unwanted on the whole. And I'm like, okay. And he was giving some details. And I said, this guy is not all softy as people predict he is. Not behind closed doors. He's just being presentable to the press and to the fans. Well, behind closed doors, it's not like that. You have to actually work hard to be in the position. But then again, he puts a lot of confidence in his players. And uh, he definitely need a few more players. You need a, a you need a striker, a really good one, because Cavani is not going to be around forever. And the defense, he definitely, you know, losing Maguire again was a huge it yeah. was a huge blow. So I think it will definitely help if you get a few more players in there. I think we definitely have a chance to to win to win. I do. Okay, Mandy, same tactically. So Ole, we agree he's not a bad guy. We know he's a legend at the club. We know he's okay. But tactically, we've seen the, the in-game management during the game. Sometimes, mm, mm, uh, he struggles. So that is why, is he still tactically the right guy to take us with players? So I'll play devil's advocate for just a little bit here. So we're everyone, the Ole out crews are the people who are like, are we sure about Ole? They're saying, well, his tactics in the game. So how do we know that him taking players out 30 minutes, 60 minutes, doing all of our substitutions are actually going to win us the game, right? Um, mm -hmm. We don't know that. We can't see into the future. So right. I think flip it around the other way. If Ole was making tons of changes, 30 minutes in, 60 minutes in, and we were still losing, it would be the same exact conversation, just the opposite way, right? We would say, I don't know why he doesn't leave people on, give them the chance to make the scores. They were in motion. So it'd be the exact same. So that kind of thought right. process, while I get it, because that's born of our frustration, um, we don't know. Um, I think that he knows his players best. He sees them in training. He has the game plan. He's with them at halftime. They know what they're um, doing. They know what they talk about. I don't. So, um, you know, I didn't like Jose because I didn't like him no, previously, right? Um, he was a lot of trying to be Sir Alex, but not, right? So same thing. Ole is going to um, stand up for his guys. He's going to stand up for his players. He hasn't thrown anyone under the bus like Jose yeah, did. That's true. That I cannot stand. So do we know if he gives him the hair dryer in the back, a la Sir Alex? Maybe he does. I've seen a couple of clips where I've heard some things in training. I'm like, oh, OK, that's a little that's a little sassy. Um, but I I appreciate him sticking up for the players, giving them the time. I mean, it is still a pretty young team apart for a couple outliers. Um, what will we do in the summer? What players will we get? Um, again, I hate transfer season because I hate the the ticker tape kind of yeah. will we get them? Will we won't? How much are they? I just want to see us play the game. So um, whoever we get this season, hopefully there's some additions in defense for sure. Oh, um, I do miss the days of having that solid kind of Vita and Ferdinand situation where people were not going to break through that very easily. And um, corners weren't such a, uh, a terrifying time, time for us. Days, but um, These days we have a set piece. Everyone's hot. <gasps> You know, yeah. it shouldn't be that way. I'm like, oh, God, there's a goal. But, you know, you know 
I think if we get the, the key pieces that are missing, I mean, look at the talent that we have. Um, you know, we have Marcus Rashford, we have Paul. These are people who are out there right now in Euros playing for their team. You know, they're um, Scott McTominay, like um, Kay said. So we have a lot, a lot of potential. I mean, success doesn't happen overnight. And in the grand scheme of things, Sir Alex was with the club for, God, how many years? 26 years? 26 years. And uh, lots of trophies, but it wasn't a trophy every year in every big competition. So I think we just have to take... Yeah. He, he fought relegation the first two years. He fought relegation. Yeah. That's impossible to imagine. He did fight relegation. Yeah. So we yes. have to take everything with a, a bit of a grain of salt. And I think that's part of being a fan. You know, people who have become United fans in the last, I don't know, two decades or so, were used to continued success. So I think that's right. why it hurts so much right now is that you go for a certain length of time without a trophy. But I'm optimistic. I'm pretty optimistic for next season. So hopefully this recording doesn't come back to bite me, but yes. <laughs> you know what? We will get you back. We will get you back to come and say what you said. We have your tape, so don't worry. You know what? I'll, I'll stick up. I'll stick up for it. I'll, I'll say, you know, I was optimistic at the time, but hopefully we're holding a tr- uh, Champions League trophy at the end of um, this wow, time next year. Wow, that's a big I'm one. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. Ladies, that is a big leap. It's a big leap. Don't forget, Liverpool going to get better. Man City, Chelsea, hey. But I oh, I want the best for Man United, without a doubt. We've been supporting them over 35 years. So it hurts when... But I, I, I'm, I'm happy for the transition. But I'm asking, how long is this transition going to be? I want to see a few trophies, which because with trophies, it encourages the players to realise we, we have won this collectively. But when we keep going to semi-finals, oh wait, we lost some penalties, which was unfortunate. Unfor- let's just call it as it is. It does hurt. But going forward, you, you see United are linked with everybody these days. It's like everyone's linked to United, don't even know who want, who's really coming or who's going. So like Kay said, if we get the right player, say a Sancho now, okay, Sancho. He'll play on the right, which would be good. Cavani, mm, one year give or take. Then we look at the set, the, the defense and the midfield is where the problems really, really stay. Mm-hmm. You have Maguire, but who to partner with him is the problem. We leak goals, set pieces, corner kicks. It's like, come on. And mm-hmm. if they can't fill those spots now and just say, all right, we just go keep scoring. If you keep scoring and keep open, uh, conceding, there's no, there's no consistency. So with the players, are you guys San- are you all ready for Sancho to come? What's your take? Um, uh, okay. Yes, yes. I, I I'm hoping that that happens. I really do hope that happens because that will give us a big boost, and it will definitely help Rashi out at some point. And again, Cavani. And remember that Cavani is what 34 years old, but I mean he's still he's very good. But again, injury again. So if he has an injury, which he mm, did have, mm, what's mm. What, you know what's going to happen? And then we have Mason Greenwood. Let's not forget that he's you know he's young, but he's very good, and he's developing very well as well. So that is really good. But defensively, we need help. We need help uh, from Maguire. We saw what happened, you know, and it's so unfortunate. Yeah. This guy has never had an injury. He was always playing, and then yeah. at the last minute, I think it's just a misfortune for United in the end. I'm like, because we were supposed to win. Everybody knows that. Right. And then this unfortunate event just takes place from Maguire. I'm like, oh my God, this is no good. You know, and then of course, I, I really like Eric Bailey. But at the end of the day, we all know the situation with him, with the injuries and oh God, it's just really sad because he throws himself out there, but it's yeah. so sad. Yeah. But we really, we, we really need, um, we really, our defense really needs to tighten up. Honestly, we need that. There, it, it, I don't see us, winning anything without getting some defense help yeah. from Maguire. That, right. It's just not possible. Right. And uh, again, we need another striker because Harry Kane is out there. Um, I, I don't think Tottenham is going to let him go. No. I really don't think so. No, I, can't I, I can't see it happening at all. But they're not winning anything regardless. So I don't know what he's going to do. <laughs> they're not winning. But this is not going to happen. We know that. It's but he might happen. say, he might say, okay, but United ain't winning anything either. <laughs> Oh, really? But guess when last have to, I mean, the last thing that Tottenham did was when they lost to, was it Liverpool they lost to? 
uh, for the champion leagues, right? Yeah, two years ago. Yeah. Uh, when last have they been, say, third or second in the Premier League? It's been a while. About five, we go five you. seasons back. Thank you. However, Man United has been two years in a row now, right? Second, third. Prior to that, we dropped off. But before that, we were second again in the 17th era when we won that Europa League title under Maruno. So at least we're doing something and we have improved drastically. So yes, it's something to look at. It is. Yep. Mandy, Sancho, would he make an impact down? Because I think uh, playing Mason on the right, I don't think him and wan they connect at all mm -hmm. down that right side. Sancho going on that right side, do you think he'll be would he make an impact um immediate impact um i would love to say yes i mean it's hard to say immediate impact there's the time that you get into the team there's a time to learn the culture where you fit in you know the tactics so i mean quality is quality so here there wherever they're going to be a good player so um there's a reason we've been chasing this guy for what the last three yeah, yeah, three yeah, seasons yeah. now yes, yes, um, yes but i agree I mean, I feel like the most bang for our buck is going to be a strong, you know, defensive player that we've added. Um, mm -hmm. We definitely need that. I mean, United has always kind of had a really good, strong defense. So for right now, the plan of we're just going to score a lot of goals, that's also great. Love to see that. But we need that defense that you can rely on because we've always had a, like, you know, strong counterattack. So yeah. if you don't have that stop and go, um, you don't get that counterattack um, that you can get. So um, Sancho, sure, let's get him. You know, I'm going to play messy transfer person and say um, Cristiano Ronaldo is hanging out there too. Let's bring him back for uh -huh. another season. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I go go to see him, he's. I, I would going. love to have him back. Hey, I don't mind. Me too. Me too. It's, it will be a joy. It will be. So let's if we go it. from the defense, we, okay, let's move into the midfield. The McFred combination, I will tell you now, it does not work because mm -hmm. what it does, it just has two babysitting guys who just babysit the back four and mm -hmm. were, were short of people going forward. Because them two guys, they play sideways. They barely play forward. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I can't, I would love to hate to see the same combination of McFred mm -hmm. again next season without us getting the midfield. Yes, midfielders are defensive midfielders are hard to get, and the only specialized one we have is Matic. As we all know, he's not the he's not the strongest spring chicken currently. He's, he's getting older. He hasn't got the legs to run, so he's now using what he call my brain to figure out. Okay, mm -hmm. he's there, but we need West Ham once say we could have Declan Rice, but what they're asking for is a uh, kind of not in the Glazers' budget. Let's put it that way. So, Kay, with the midfield, where are United now? What What do you think can be done different? What you saw last season? Okay, so midfield was totally changed by uh, Fernandez, right? Yeah. Which was really good. However, as you're talking about the Fred situation, something needs to be changed there. And you can't just... Um, I, I, I agree with you. I don't like the combination. I don't like it. And something needs to be changed. The budget uh, for that, I don't think. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't. I don't. I honestly don't think that they're going to do anything to change that. Really, wow. I don't think they're going to buy. No, I don't think that's going to happen. I think the focus for them, um, they're going to work around that, whether they're going to use Matic or not. And I noticed that um, all didn't really use uh, Matic as much. Um, in this, I, I noticed that it was really Fred. And the Mactonomy and yeah. Rico and yeah, so he wasn't really utilized as much. But I don't think that they will actually spend anything there. I, I just that's my belief. I don't think so. I right. think the goal really is looking at the, the striker and the defensive side. So right. but I again it's up to O on that. He right. has to make some changes there. And hopefully he does. Hopefully he does. But then again. Again, I, I think it's all about the players too because I think Fred is really dedicated to the team and, you know, puts in his work because he doesn't, Hull doesn't just play a player like that. So I don't know what's going on behind the scenes in training or whatever, but um, sometimes it doesn't work out on the pitch. We see that. So I don't know, but I, don't, I just don't think that 
it is something that they will that um the Glazers will push for cool. for midfield after they spent you know all that on and then Man we have Pogba again. again. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't I don't see it. Right. Mandy, the midfields of United, we saw them too. We saw McFred babysitting the back four because we, as you can see, the Maguire mm. combo was always a bit iffy. So they had yeah. the babysitting service who don't go forward. But Matic, who's a specialist, so he had two guys doing the job of one man and they mm -hmm. still could not deliver that same job. What's your take on that midfield for United last season? Yeah, I agree. You know, Matic, I mean, Matic, what? five seasons ago would be perfect. I mean, I think it would, we would maybe be looking at a little bit different season right now oh, yeah. because he did have that true kind of midfield kind of hossness about him. That's a yeah. country Texas word. If anyone doesn't know what that means, right. but um, he's, he's going to boss the midfield. Uh, I think McTominay can grow into that player. I, I see that for him. Um, but like you said, if it's a babysitting situation, once we fix or get some help in the defense and allows him to play a true midfield position like right. he should be playing, then, you know, maybe Fred's not so bad. Again, I think, you know, our biggest problem is going to be, in my head, defense. That's mm -hmm. what I've seen all season. Right. So where are we going to spend the money? I am hoping on defense. defense. Um and Cristiano Ronaldo. But other than that, <laughs> whatever we do, whatever we do, I can come in and play. I can, I'll come in and play. Um, I'll take some legs if I have to. But uh, that's fine. That is uh, fine. You know, we'll, we'll support you. Yeah. I, yes. everyone gets, can get my name on the back. I'll be number like 1,752, probably. <laughs> right. That's my take on the midfield. So, so uh, yeah. Okay. We could all see the midfield. Uh, it, it, it kind of because games are won or lost in the midfield, right? Yes. Games are won or lost in the midfield. So yeah, we we get it. Um, hopefully United once they saw the the defense and the support, the whole Sancho thing, just get it done. I mean, yeah. as Dortmund want four installments, United want five installments. They want adding clause. They, uh, it's it's so much. But I always say this: if you really want something, you should have done your homework from last year. So you're doing the same thing, even though it's a reduced amount, you're doing the same thing again. And you ask yourself, the, the, the fans are like, but did you know that last season? Why are you going through the same thing you should have learned? So yeah, that's the frustration. So if we sort out the midfield, but I, like Kay and you, you said, Amanda, I can't see us investing so much in the midfield. I see the attack with Sancho. I see a defense Either Varane from Real Madrid, that will work. That will be great. If that happens, I think that will give United that stability at the back and at least concede less set-piece goals whereby a corner mm. kick, everyone's like, oh, you know, it will be great. But I can't just see anything changing in that midfield, which is sad. But hopefully, Ole can see it, but I wish he does. Mm -hmm. So before we round up, I'll say this. With Chelsea... Winning the Champions League last season with a manager who was there less than six months. It shows he's a very good technical manager. We saw Liverpool struggle. They literally just barely made it to the top four. Then we saw an Arsenal. Arsenal is not even, let's not even, they're just, they're Arsenal not even a, a top six. They're, they're top, they're uh, mid-table team. So let's put that to one side. We saw, we saw, <laughs> we saw Man City who were supposed to win the quadruple, then the treble, then Chelsea denied them in both FA Cup and the Champions League, which was great. This Man City team that we see now, can you see them getting better or can United get to them? Okay. Yes, yes, we're going to get to them. Of course, the noisy neighbors. Yes, we're going to get to them. Um, <clears throat> Well, I don't know what I don't know what happened. Again, it was Manchester City supposed to win that Champions League, but I think that you know, I don't know if they were a little bit over their heads or something like that. They were, you know, I I, I don't think so. I, I don't know. They underestimated Chelsea. I think they did. Um, yeah, they, I I really do think they did. And and I, again, I'll give credit to the Chelsea manager. We've added out. Yes, I give credit to him. But then we can't forget Lombard because. 
um, he was the one that actually uh, bought those players yeah. and they made a lot of changes. I think that they didn't give him enough, you know, the time. But again, it's Chelsea. We know what Chelsea does. They get rid of somebody as soon as they see it's not working out. That's how that's the culture over there. And um, so my thing is this. I don't know how well how well they will do, go, even though they won the, the Champions League. Chelsea has a thing that you know, they will win something and then they just fall down. You know, those fall and they start stumbling, they start having this inconsistency stuff. It's not going right with the manager or with the ownership. Something always happens and they stumble. So I'm not 100% confident in them that yes, they will win. Um, yes, are they a threat? Yes, they are. I think they are because the manager is pretty good. He's really good. Uh, yes, they're a threat, but I, I don't see, I, I can't see them winning it. Liverpool, on the other hand, I believe they will be way better. Because yeah. most of their players are coming back, and they yeah. will, they, they will, they're gonna come back. They're gonna come back, and it will be a battle. Manchester City, though, um, I don't think they're gonna win it this season either. I, I just don't. Um, I, I just don't see it. I, I, I don't see it happening. They have good players. They're looking for another player because of Aguero, of course. Yeah. But I, I just don't see it. I don't. United is going to win. So I'm being very biased right now. And uh, we just need two more players. <laughs> I'm not seeing anyone winning except us. I'm sorry. But uh, we have it honestly is your opinion and we respect it. So hey, <laughs> go for it, Kate. Go for it. We are winning. Okay, we have what it takes. Look at how we how we played. I mean, as, as Mandy was saying, we just need that defense. If we get it, even if we don't get Sanchez, but just, just get that defense going, you know, get it strong. I mean, we have good strikers. We just need their head to be level. We need them to be in the game. We need them to do what they need to do. We need the coach to know what to play, when to play, which team. And we can do it. I'm, I 100% believe that. And then guess what? We're going back. We're going back to the stadium. There you we go. Were... Exactly. The fans will be there to cheer them on. There you yes. go. Yes. You see? Exactly. Man. We're going back. Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool. How big a threat would they be for United next season? Or, or how would United handle them next season? Um, I'm just going to be a true fan right now and say they're no threat to us next season. Okay. We're going to be playing with a chip on our shoulder. I mean, to see the response, there's one thing to lose and come in second here and come in second there, but to see, I think sometimes it's a more powerful response when you have that kind of chip on your shoulder and like, you know what, we're almost there and there's nothing right now. I'm playing mad. I'm playing angry. You're going to see some fire next season. Um, City had a big loss, you know, Aguero's gone. Yeah, but they're very roller coaster, you know. Yeah, they'll start off strong with the season, then they'll drop down. They're losing to everybody, they're losing to the bottom of the table. And like you said, they were playing for the quadruple, then they were playing for the treble. Now, what did we start? What did we end with? Um, the, you know, two the league, the so league and, the, league and the other one that we doesn't count unless we win it, right? So, um, <laughs> you know, I think that I think. Maybe, you know, they'll be top four, but I don't um, I don't see City winning next season, the, the league for sure. Um, Chelsea, listen, when we were doing kind of the same thing that Chelsea does, which was someone wasn't doing good, then we lost them, right? So then let's say Giggsy, caretaker manager, came in one, three, a couple games after he came in and we we're like, wow, it's a miracle. For the Chelsea manager, it just happened to be the Champions League final, right? Mm -hmm. If it was regular season, different game. Right. Um, so it looks really good for him, but is that sustainable? How is this going to turn out over the course of a whole season? We shall see. Um, might be a super different conversation we're having in December, but, um, you know, great for him. Uh, I always are, am, you know, happy for the success of teams who are playing city because we, oh, we don't want them to take, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we don't want them to take our, um, you Trouble know, take tackle. our title of winning the no. trouble for sure. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, Liverpool's coming back. I don't know what this season was for them, but um, sometimes uh, sometimes the big names and all this stuff, they can kind of get in the way. So that's why I'm happy to have kind of homegrown guys mixed in. And I like that culture that Ole has brought back a little bit to use some of the youth, you know, that's that's been good for us in the past. So right. I think – culture. 
Yeah. I mean, not to say that I'm like a purist. We can't change anything. We have to do everything because the game has, the game has changed for sure. Look at the amount of games that we play over the course of a season. Right. I mean, by the time you get to the end of the season, you've played in what four competitions and you know, I think that's another part of the game is finding out, um, having the good people who can come up off the bench and you don't have to play the same team every time, but you need to have, the same amount of success with different people in, in the positions. So that's City's secret. City have a, a it's like they have like for like for each position, whereby mm-hmm. if this guy doesn't play, the guy replacing is just as good. See what I mean? And that's what keeps them going. We have 14, 13 regular good players. When Ole looks on the bench, it's like, uh, mm, not sure about you. Uh, not sure. That's the problem. People yeah. like Diallo. He should give him more game time. You know, he's young, he's got energy, but doesn't give him enough game time. Van der Beek, I don't know what happened there. I don't know what to say. I don't know if Ole doesn't like the guy. I don't know. The guy's very good. It is a bit weird, you know? But so yeah, that's just, that yeah. situation was a bit weird, you know, for him to it be was. such a, you know, kind of superstar coming in over the summer. And, um, you know, we have... Uh, uh, VDS saying he's great coming into you guys, you know, take care of him. And then it was like, where did he go? But you see? maybe next season. We'll see. Is that is so, that repeat, right? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. I'm going to leave you. I'm going to ask you one last question. Will United win a trophy next season? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Yes. Okay. We're winning. We okay. are winning. Right. We are winning the league next, next season. Yes, we are. Same question to Mandy. Are uh, United winning a trophy? I don't care what trophy it is. Are they winning a trophy? We're not winning a trophy. We're winning two trophies, bare minimum, next season. I like that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have we've come to the end of the show. We had two lovely mm-hmm. ladies, Kay representing the East Coast, New York, and Mandy representing Houston Red Army from the South. They've had a, they've had a, we've had a great time today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe by hitting the logo at the bottom right of our, uh, our screen. But we're going to have you guys back again soon. But we'll see as the Euros has, has started, we'll see how our United players play for the countries and, you know, support them wherever they're playing. Oh, no injuries, please. That's no all injuries. we ask. Exactly. No injuries. Yes. No injuries. No injuries. I know. Because after the Euros, is going straight into the Olympics. I mean, some of the, we have a lot of football this season. We have Euros. We have Olympics. We have the South American uh, tournament coming up. So, and that after that, preseason for most of the teams. And uh, August will be here before you realize. We're back to start a new season. So, Kay, thank you very much for joining our show today. This is the first time we've had two lovely ladies on the show at the same time. This, this guy, <laughs> you guys are making a rec- are making history for being the first ladies interviewed on our channel virtually. So, United. There you go, United. Long live United. There you see, you see that, you see that that mug she's holding representing our channel. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Kay, thank you very much for coming on our show. Mandy, thank you very much. We love you guys. So, guys, see you guys very soon. So, from us, it's goodbye and good night. Thank you very much, ladies. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, Tim. Bye. 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 Bye.